All right, and welcome to the Spanish Villa movie poster tutorial. And this is not an actual real movie or anything like that. This is just something that I've made up. And it's not the full size of an actual one sheet. This is more along the size of a DVD cover, DVD movie cover. And a lot of the techniques that we're going to be doing during this video are what they really use on movie covers, like with the masking, the color blending, the fonts, the type, all those things. Okay, and we're just going to create this one type of concept where it looks like we have a team of people and it's a very commonly used and a lot of times you see this where the faces are really close together and they just all blend in and it sort of looks like this and it's you know creating some type of visual communication. Now I don't have any special training in visual communication or anything like that. That is something that needs to be learned uh, that I would actually go to school for. Uh, to learn how to do it right if that's something or if this is something that you would like to do or pursue for a career or something like that but I'm gonna show you some Photoshop techniques that you can use so you can create your own movie covers that look just like this so let's go ahead and get started okay before we begin I wanna go over some of the images that we will be using for this tutorial now the first image that we have right here is an image of a lake we have a nice sky in the air and then we have some trees and we're going to be using this image uh, for the for part of the background for the movie cover and then we have a picture of these uh, old buildings on the side of this uh, cliff here which looks kind of cool and we're going to use that on the bottom of the movie poster and then we have the, the finished movie poster right here and then we have these pictures of the people that will be included into the poster Please keep in mind, though, we're going to be working with a movie cover that has a very dark background. It's not black, but it's dark. And so the images that you would like to use for your movie cover, if they don't have a dark background, then you're going to need to crop these images or mask the background or remove the background out of the people so you can place them over the darker background. However, if you do have photos that already have a dark background, such as this one over here, then you can just use the paintbrush and mask around the photo, and you don't necessarily have to uh, mask that before you bring it into the project. You can do it while you're in the project. But I've, al I've already went ahead and masked all these people right here, so you don't have to. And so let's go ahead and start this tutorial. I'm going to go right over to Photoshop right now and let's come up here to File, New, and let's create the new image that we'll be using for this movie poster. Now, we're not going to actually make it a real movie poster size, okay? Uh, this is just, you know, it, it'll be too large and we're going to make this much smaller so it's just a lot easier to work with and, and it's just a smaller file anyway. Uh, but we're going to go with something around 100 and, or I'm sorry, 1168 pixels wide by 1700 pixels tall and a resolution of 300. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And here it is. OK, so the very first step, what we're going to do is fill this background in with black. So just over on the toolbar, let's select the paint bucket tool. And with black as the foreground, just go ahead and click on the image to fill that in with black. All right, to begin, we're going to start on the background. We're going to totally lay out the background of this movie poster. So let's go over to the Adobe Bridge. And we're going to open up this first image that you see right here of the lake and the trees and the sky. And we're going to use this for the background. So just go ahead and double click on it. And let's bring that into Photoshop. And then I'll select the Move tool on the toolbar. I'll just click on this photo and drag it over to the new or to our new movie poster image right here. And then I'll just position this around like so. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to completely fill the image, but I'm just going to move this around. I'll zoom out here a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, leave that right about there. That looks good. Now we won't be using the color in this image, so let's just come up here to Image Adjustments and just select Desaturate, which is right here, to remove all the color, okay? And then we can come over here and just close this out. We no longer need this. And let's just give this layer a name. So I can just put Lake, or better yet, we'll just select, we'll just make this Clouds. 
because the lake part of this photo will not be featured in the poster. So we're going to call this clouds. Let's go back into the Adobe Bridge, and I want you to open up this next image right here. I'll go ahead and double click on it, and we have these buildings. Uh, the rustic buildings are on the side of this cliff, and looks like they're about to fall off. But, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just select the move tool, click and drag over and drag this one over to the project image as well, just like this. And I'll position this down. Now we're going to actually see this building here in this image. We, we, we want to see it anyway, but uh, so we're going to have to resize it so we can see most of the building just so we get the entire building. It's not, I'm sure it's more than one building. It's not one building, but uh, it's probably a bunch of houses and stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and move this down and I want to leave this area down here for the credit block. All the credits and are going to go on the bottom of the movie poster, so I'm going to have that move that up a little bit. And I will go ahead and press the Enter key on the keyboard to confirm that transformation. There we go. Doesn't look very exciting? No worries. Because what we're going to do is desaturate this layer as well. Because we really don't need the color. We're going to create our own color and our own drama for this poster. Let's go right up here to Image Adjustments and desaturate this layer as well. So let's just, uh, whoops, I'm going to go ahead and double click on this layer and we're going to call it buildings. All right, looking good. Now let's go ahead and zoom into the image here. Well, I will just real quick because I'm going to remove the sky behind these buildings here. And we're going to replace that sky with this sky that we have on the clouds layer. So on the building layer, let's make a layer mask. Just, just come down to the bottom of the layer layers palette here and click on the add layer mask button. And what I'll do is make sure that's activated, this mask right here. And then over here on the toolbar, I'll select black for the color for the foreground. And then I'll select the paintbrush. And by the way, I don't need this image here anymore, so I'll just go ahead and close that just so it's not as distracting. But I'll select the brush tool here and for with a nice soft brush, so we'll turn the hardness all the way down and the master diameter somewhere in the middle or it looks like this will be good for now and I'll just paint on this mask and by painting on the mask on this layer we are basically removing the image we are erasing the image away revealing the layer below this image which contains the sky. Look at that. Now I'm getting a little bit close to these buildings here, so what I'm going to do is turn down the diameter just a touch there. And this is sort of bringing out kind of like a foggy type of effect. Look at this. And we have these trees in the background. Now, I'm not crazy about the glow, uh, but what I can do is turn this brush up just a little bit higher and fix some of that glow a little bit so it's just, just not so noticeable, something like this. And better yet, I think I'll just, yeah, I'll just paint this through. Because these trees right here were not originally there. Those are the trees from the lake image. You see that? And if I make that invisible, you can see this is the before. And this is with the clouds layer below it. So what we're going to do is use this as the background. But we're also going to fade or use a gradient and fill this top in here with black or have it go from black to transparency down to the building or down to these buildings down here. So let me go ahead and just make a new layer and let's call this gradient. Then what I'll do is select the gradient tool and up here on the options bar, let's, let's select the, the second option. It's called foreground to transparent. Go ahead and click on that. 
And then what we can do is position this cross here, and it's really small, you'll barely be able to see it. I'll zoom in here a little bit, and I'll move this image up. You see this, oh, let me select it one more time, there we go. You see this little cross here that I'm using right here? I'm gonna position that at the very top of the image, and then hold down the shift key on the keyboard and hold, click and hold and drag down and then release. And you can see that will fill it in and have, so you'll have that gradual blend. Let's go ahead and try that again. It looks like I might have to come down a little bit smaller, or I'm sorry, a little bit lower down here. There we go. And here's a tip. If you ever want to increase the gradient or make it darker, what you can do is duplicate the gradient layer. You see that? So when you do that, that'll make it darker. Now, we'll go ahead and do that if we need to later on, but for now, I'll just leave it like this. So I like the background and everything. That looks pretty hot. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. All right, I'm not too concerned about the color, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it black and white for now. Let's go into the Adobe Bridge. And let's click on this guy right here, since he's going to be the main guy of the movie. He's going to be in the front. So let's just double click and open up him in Photoshop. And I'm going to select the Move tool, click and drag him over to the project. Then we will just go ahead and close this image out right here. We no longer need that. All right, next what I'm going to want to do is convert this layer into a smart object. Now, if you don't have Photoshop CS2 or higher, then just go ahead and skip this part. But the smart objects allow us to create non-destructible layers and objects. And so because this way later on, if we need to resize things, then we can do it without losing any quality. But just go ahead and skip this part if you don't have the newest version of Photoshop. That's okay. So I'm going to rename this layer to Man 1. And we're going to come up here to Layer, Smart Object, and Group into Smart Object. And we know it's a smart object because we see the smart object icon at the bottom right of the thumbnail right there. Great. Let's go ahead up here to Edit, Free Transform, and I'll hold down Alt and Shift. Now that's Option and shift, and I'm only doing that so I can maintain the image's aspect ratio while I resize it down. Look at that. And if I don't hold down Alt, then you you know then it'll allow me to resize it to one of the corners. But if I hold down Alt, then it'll resize from the center out or the or out to the center. Either way. So let's resize this down and position this somewhere on the poster preferably in the top middle area of the poster here. I'm going to go ahead and confirm this by pressing the Enter key on the keyboard. Great. Now, let's just zoom into the image here and take a look at this. Well, we need to make it look like his face is just coming out of the sky. You know what I mean? So, it looks like he's just peeping his head or his face out of the sky. And so, we need to mask all the area around him around his head. So let's make a mask or a layer mask on this man one layer or smart object. Come down to the bottom of the layers palette, click on this button right here, which will allow us to create a layer mask. Great. Let's make sure that's activated. Come over to the layers palette, click on the brush, and I will make this a larger brush. And then I'll bring this brush over here and start painting on the side of them, just like this. It's a lot of fun. It's really not that hard to do. And I'll just paint down here and up. And the cool thing is that we are not actually using the eraser tool and erasing away this layer. We are only using a mask. So we can come back here anytime and change the foreground color to white and bring back the areas that we removed or painted on in the mask. Look at that. And that is why I like to use layer masks, and I think everybody should. But check that out. If you want to get a better look at it, you can make these other layers invisible over here, and you can see exactly what you're doing. But the important thing is, is that it must look good with the background. I want to go ahead and make these visible. Here we go. Now, I don't want to go too crazy right now, because I haven't incorporated the other 
people's heads into the image. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go over to the Adobe Bridge and let's see who's going to be next. How about this guy right here with the cool glasses on? I'll go ahead and double click him and he's already masked and everything as you can see. So I'll select the move tool and click and drag him over to the project. Now he's pretty big. So what I'm going to do is just drag him below man one and we're going to call him man two. All right, now let's go up here to layer smart object and group him into a smart object as well. Over here to edit, free transform, and let's resize him down. Okay, it would look better if he was probably tilting out like this. So if you do have to, re you know, you can rotate things, do whatever you want here. I'm really focusing on having this type of shape. And if I'm not totally happy with the transformation right now, I can just come back and do it later because we have a smart object. But there we go. Okay, that looks really good. I don't want to get uh, too fussy with this right now. I'm going to go ahead and press the enter key on the keyboard. Now let's go ahead and add some more people into the project back to the Adobe bridge. And how about this guy right here? Double click on him and I will click on the move tool and drag him into the project. And he's a lot bigger. So we're going to come up here to first thing, layer, smart object, group into smart object, and then over to edit free transform. And I will just transform him down. And I'll probably go over here to transform and flip him horizontally, just like this. And then I'll just make him over here sticking out of the ear, sort of. Keep in mind that I want the tops of their heads to be very close to the same. I want that nice composition. I want that nice, even look. I don't want him his head down here. I want it all to be very balanced. Uh, balanced is, is the word I'm looking for. So, But check this out. This looks really good. And I'll just go ahead and I'll make it a little bit smaller and then I'll confirm that. Great. And let's name this man three. There we go. Let's bring in some more. Back to the Adobe bridge and this girl right here. This woman right here, I will double click on that to bring her in the move tool, click, drag her over to the project. All right, then I'm going to go over to the layers palette and drag her below man two, because she's going to be all the way in the back. She's going to be way back there. So let's name her woman one and let's convert her into a smart object group that into a smart object and then I will come up here to edit free transform hold down alt and shift and we'll resize this down and I'm gonna rotate her a little bit so she can so we're able to see her face there also keep in mind that watch, look at the eyes, make sure the eyes are lining up very good because then you're going to have a lot better composition as well. And so that's very important too. I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to go ahead and press the enter key on the keyboard to confirm that. Great. Let's bring one more person into the project back on the Adobe bridge and uh, this woman right here. Let's double click on her and load her into Photoshop. I'll select the move tool, click and drag her over to the project. And let's just give her a name, woman two, and I can drag her below here, but it's probably not necessary. I'm gonna come over here to edit, transform and flip her horizontally. So she's pointing this way. And let's go over here to layer and make her a smart object as well. There we go. And then while we're at it here, we can just close these other images back here because we no longer need them. 
And it'd be a good time at this point to go ahead and save your image, if you haven't already, uh, before we move on. All right. Now I'm going to come over here to Edit, Transform, and transform this woman down a little bit. I want to make sure that her head is the same size as this woman's head over here. And that's going to create a nice balance as well. You see that? So I'm being very picky here at all these little details, but they are going to make all the difference at the very end. Look at that. And I'll pay attention to the eyes. I want to line these eyes up all the way across. They don't have to be straight across, but they can almost have a very slight, almost a very slight curve to them. And I want to make sure the heads are going at the same angles, just like this woman over here. And when I like it, I'll go ahead and press the enter button. There we go. So we've we've merged all the people into the movie poster. So now we have to just go through and do some masking to make all this blend together. So it looks like this over here. Where do we start? Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to touch up this man number one over here. I'll click on his layer mask and with the paintbrush, I'm going to make a larger brush and I'm just going to make his collar fade back into the background like this. Look at that. And I can make that a little bit larger. There we go. And let's go ahead and move over to the glasses guy over here. And so I'll click on man number two and I'll make this layers, the thumbnails just a little bit larger. And by the way, the, the way I'm doing that is if you want the thumbnails larger in the layers palette. Most people know how to do this already, but for those of you that don't know yet, in the layers palette, if you come up to the very top right, click on this little arrow button right here, and come all the way down to the very bottom, you'll find the palette options right here, and you can set how large you want the thumbnail to be. You can also set, and recently in Photoshop CS and Photoshop CS2, you can now set the thumbnails to only display the layers bounds. Is this cool or what? And so what that means is that you see how the layer looks now. It's showing the entire full size of the image and then it shows the contents of the layer exactly where it's located. Well, if I select layer bounds, then it's just going to show the objects on those layers and not all the space that's around them. I'm going to come over to the guy with the glasses, man number two, and then down to the bottom of the layers palette. I'm going to click on this button right here to create a new layer mask. There we go. And then over to the toolbar, let's make sure that's set to black. And then I will right click and make this brush just a little bit smaller. And I'll come in here and paint on him, making him blend in or fade out into the background, just like this. There we go. Now the lightness of his face, I'm not going to worry about that right now, but it looks like this guy's ear, man number one, it looks like his ear is kind of running over into man two. So let's go ahead and click on his layer mask, man one, and we will just use the brush and I will probably make that a little bit smaller back on man one there we go something like that perfect okay and let's just move on here to man number three let's make a new layer mask and click on the toolbar and then I will come in here and we've got to fix the top of his head here because that's that's just not going to look right. Just want that to blend in with the background. Look at that. Okay, good. And I will fix the bottom here 
of his neck. And it looks like I'll just go ahead and move over to the woman number two over here. And I'll create a layer mask with the, with the paintbrush. And I'll just paint in here. And I'm, I have such a habit of right clicking. But we can also use the brackets on the keyboard to make the brush larger or smaller. Okay. And I'll just come in here and paint away. Make sure I get his neck there. There we go. Great. Let's go over to man one and I'm just going to paint the mask over the very top of his head just to fade that in a little bit more like this. There we go. And let's look over at woman number two over here, or woman number one actually. Let's make a layer mask on her layer and touch up her neck here at the very bottom. Look at that. Great. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. And that's pretty close to what we want, is what you see right here. Now, the colors don't blend in together at all. And I will be getting to that in just a moment. And I'm gonna show you how to actually add a color overlay so all the images inside this poster blend in together. Go over here to the layers palette and I want you to click on the topmost layer right here, man number one, and let's just make a new layer on top of him. And let's just call this color overlay. And let's fill this layer in with the color that we will be using to blend everything in together. Let's come over to the toolbar and click on the foreground color right here. And then down here where you see the hex value input right here, I want you to enter in 864200. And that will give us that golden brown look uh, or color that we need to make this look right. And then go ahead and click OK. Come over to the toolbar and select the paint bucket tool. Click on the image to fill it in completely like this. Then I want you to come over to the opacity of that layer and turn it down just a touch. 85 or 65% will be just fine. But more importantly, I want you to come over to the layer blending mode menu for that layer. Come all the way down where you'll find color right here. Go ahead and click on that, and now that will blend everything in together. And we can control the opacity so we can have a little bit of the original color and then bring in some of the new color that we've created as well. And so you can have a nice blend there, or you can just go full blast if you want to, but uh, I like to have a little bit of the original color in there mixed in with our color overlay. All right, so let's move on to adding the text to the movie poster. I'm gonna come over to the toolbar and I'm gonna make sure my foreground color is white. I can press the D and X keys on the keyboard to do that. And then I'll select the type tool. I'll click on the image and I'm gonna type out the name of the movie. And you can type out any name you want. Mine's gonna be Spanish Villa. I'll press the enter key. Better yet, I'll double click on that type layer and up here on the options bar, I'll set the point size for that type. Select the move tool. And it looks like to me, I could probably decrease the letter spacing. So I'll double click on that type layer again and then go over to the characters palette. If you don't, if you don't see the characters palette, it's located on the Windows menu and you'll find it right here. But on the Characters palette, 
And I'll move this off the palette well for now. There we go. And right here, this is where you can adjust the letter spacing, which is called the tracking. You can set this to zero and see how that looks. If it's not enough, then you can go ahead and decrease it even more. But I'm gonna select the move tool and just position this, position the name of the movie right here underneath the people. And I'll probably go ahead and just make that a little bit larger maybe. Try that out. And that's probably too big, so I'll just decrease the point size maybe down to 40. And I'll zoom in here so we can see this a little bit closer. Now, the name of the movie is pretty bland. It's just Spanish Villa, yes. But to make this just a little bit more interesting, I'm going to take the type tool and just select the Villa word over here and click on the foreground. And I'm going to make that red. And then click OK. Now, check that out. I like that much better. And so I'll position this over here. Great. And I've noticed that if you want the title of the movie to stand out even more, then what you can do is darken the background. So I can come over to the Layers palette and click on the clouds right here. And we can just make an, an adjustment layer for this clouds layer. So I can hold down the Option key, which is the, or I'm sorry, I can hold down the Alt key, which is the Option key on the Mac, and then come down here and select Levels, and put a check in this box right here, click OK, and then I can move this black slider here just to the left, or to the right, and that will make the background darker, but at the same time, making the people's heads blend in better, but also making the name of the movie more prominent. It's just, it's more visible this way. And these are just all very basic things, you know. Now let's add the tagline for the movie. I'm going to go ahead and click on the topmost layer, change the foreground color to white. I'm going to click on the image and let's just put, there is no well, I can put, there is only, and I'm going off the page here, so I can just double click on that. And uh, move this over a tad. Resize this down. There is only one secret. There we go. I'll select the Move tool. And when you're doing any type of typography, you want to keep contrast in mind. There needs to be a good contrast between the title. It could be a logo. You want the, a good contrast between the title or the logo and the tagline. So you can see that this, we can say this Spanish villa is the logo, but we could also have the tagline, and we want a very good contrast in between the two. And so I'm going to make this smaller, and by making the tagline smaller, we've created more contrast. Look at that. Cool. Well, let's see what else we can do here. We can add a credit block. And if you would like to learn how to create credit blocks, and credit blocks are the credits that you usually see at the bottom of movie posters and DVD cases, check out the movie credits video on this DVD, and I'll show you how to do that. It'll tell you more than you wanted to know about credit blocks. And there you go. Now, most of the time on movie covers, at the very top, we have the names of the actors and actresses. So I'm going to grab some text from the other movie poster that we created and paste that into here. And you can see that 
there is spacing between the names here. Well, instead of creating the names of the actors on just separate type layers, you can create them all on one type layer, and that way you know everything is aligned evenly. And then all you have to do is get it where you want it, but then you can just use the space bar. You can click the cursor somewhere in the middle and press the space bar to create the spaces in between the names, just like this. And just make sure the space on this side of the name, or on this side of the first name, is very close to the same space as it is on this side. You see that? And so we're getting nice and even. And please leave some room. Uh, don't cram it all the way up to the top. Uh, leave some room down like this. Uh, that will increase the readability. And then at the very top here, what we can do, now we have the actors up here, we can place something else down here like a film or how about this a Mark Monsiardini film I'll go ahead and make that a little bit smaller better yet I have the universe family here somewhere and it's right here universe LT and that is the one of the credit block fonts and I can put that right up there and to be very official I'll just select film and make film a little bit smaller and make a smaller so I'll, I'll select the move tool and position that and there we have it. And I'll zoom out. And then we will create our credit block and drag the credit block over to the poster to make it complete. And if the credit block is not visible enough on the bottom, and it's very important that this is readable, I'll make a new layer just above the gradient layer right here. And by the way, I'll go ahead and put this character palette back in the palette well. There we go. I'll make a new layer and I'll call this bottom shadow. And then I'll select the brush tool with a nice large brush. And I'll select black. I'll turn down the opacity to 50%. I'll zoom out and I'll just paint on the bottom of this poster like so. And that will darken it just a tad. So the credit block is more readable. Look at that. Spanish Villa coming soon. All right. So there you have it. That's how we can create a movie poster in Photoshop. And we do have another tutorial, uh, another video on creating movie poster number two, which I show how to create light beams coming out of a haunted house or something like that. So go ahead and check out that video. And I hope you guys got a lot out of this and we'll see you on the next one.